I'm James Wright. Welcome to my shop. I had a friend recently purchase a plane and contact me. He sent me a few pictures and said, hey, I just picked up this plane. It's from a company called Bailey. Can you tell me about it? Um, and I had to uh, do a little bit of explaining and uh, there, there really isn't a company called Bailey. Uh, it is the pattern of the plane or the type, the shape of plane. Um, originally made by Stanley and uh, almost everyone has copied them and made it their own. So I really wanted to go through what makes a Bailey pattern plane. Um, what are the, some of the ins and outs and uh, and a little bit about uh, how to use it and how to adjust it. So come along, let's take a look at it. So a tiny bit about the history of a Bailey pattern plane. Um, a long time ago, there was a guy named Stanley and he had a friend named Bailey. And uh, the, they manufactured the Stanley hand plane and it was a Bailey pattern. They patented it, the patent belonged to Stanley. Um, and uh, along the way, uh, Bailey had a uh, falling out with the company and uh, Stanley kept on making the Bailey pattern. Um, and during that time, Bailey was not on the plane. But when Bailey passed away, uh, Stanley decided to put Bailey on the plane. And so that's why some of them have Bailey and some of them don't. And then eventually, later on, um, they dropped the Bailey uh, from, the, uh, the, the <laughs> from the, the body itself. And you might see Bailey on other things, um, chisels and things like that. It's something that Stanley's trying to bring back into the name, getting a little bit of a history from it. So you might see that name a little bit. Bailey is uh, not the brand of the plane or tool. Bailey is the pattern. Now, I'm not going to go into all the different uh, types and sizes of hand planes. Um, I'll do that in another video, but right now I just want to talk about the Bailey pattern and how it is shaped. Um, throughout the years, the, uh, some of the different things happened on it, and uh, there are a few adjustments and changes, but mostly they're all, the, they're all basically the exact same thing. Um, some of the, uh, the stampings, this was an earlier one, I think this is a... Um, type 6, if I remember correctly. And so this one doesn't have Bailey on the front, um, but later on, then you can see Bailey is cast into it. You can also tell the age um, by some of the patent stamps and other things that might be in and out of it. And I'll leave a link to a site where you can actually look up and find out how old your tool is by what is on it. Now, it doesn't matter what size, it's still a Bailey pattern. So if you have a number three or a number four or a number seven or up to a number eight, um, it's still a Bailey pattern. And that is um, a big change from the traditional wooden pattern, whether the wood has a single iron or a double iron. Um, with this, all of the adjustment is done by tapping the iron in the wedge. And so if you want a deeper cut, you tap the iron in. If you want a lighter cut, you pull it out. If you want to shift it side to side, you can do that. Um, everything is done by actually hitting the iron. Whereas on a Bailey pattern, everything has an adjustability, whether in a knob um, or in the, the function of it. So let's tear this apart and show you how it is actually made. So number one, let's remove the lever cap. And you can pull this up, slide it up, and uh, the lever cap is what holds everything together. It keeps it in tension. Now you shouldn't ever have to loosen this nut in order to take it off. This should be just popped tight. Underneath that, we have the iron and the chip breaker. Uh, the iron is, uh, well, it's basically designed for this, so you can actually sharpen enough of this up to uh, where the eye is at, and that allows this to slide along there. It also allows the adjuster to go in and make contact with the chip breaker on the other side, so it can actually grab this notch and slide it in and out. So when you take these apart with a screw, one of the things you want to do is just loosen the screw and then immediately slide the chip breaker away from the blade so that you don't ever slide off and nick off your blade and then rotate it and then that allows you to take the chip breaker off of the iron. On here, then you have the body and this whole contraption here is called the frog. So let me take this off and let you see inside. These two screws whoop, hold the whole thing together. Uh, now it's very important that this bed be perfectly flat and that is so that the iron will actually sit flat on the bed and you get a good, um, a good reference off of the face. It, uh, if there are waves and dips in it, that might actually cause chattering and the blade kind of bounces as it goes through the wood. It also gives you a little bit better control about it. On the frog, you have all of the adjustment. The lateral adjuster is this knob here. This is what controls the blade. So it's, if it's cutting deeper on one side or the other, it allows it to turn side to side. Then in the back, 
you have the depth adjuster. And this is a knob that rolls in and out. And this knob connects with this lever. And that lever is then what connects with the chip breaker. So as you move it in and out, this whole plate will then slide back and forth, adjusting the, uh, adjusting the iron deeper into the cut or pulling it back. Another thing on some of the later um, Bailey patterns is this screw. And that screw then connects um, with this point on the frog. That allows the frog to move back and forth. Um, so you can get your blade closer to the, uh, the front of the mouth. Um, that can be done on the other ones, and no matter what, you have to loosen the screws in order to slide it back and forth. But it just makes it a little bit easier, so you can just barely loosen the screws, and then use that screw to slide it to the appropriate location, um, and then lock it down with the screws. Also on there, you have the handle, um, or the tote. And uh, just for reference sake, imagine this is a foot. This becomes the toe of the plane, and this becomes the heel of the plane. You might hear people talking about that quite a bit. So on a Bailey pattern plane, um, adjustments are far easier than on a wooden plane. There is no hitting of the hammer. There are actually knobs and uh, dials that allow you to adjust it precisely where you want it. And that's one of the big things that, that made it take off, is it becomes easy to adjust it from one thing to another. So let's actually go through a little bit on this. Now what I normally like to do is make sure that the blade isn't sticking out. Um, and I, I like to test that with my finger. You just have to be very careful not to shave your finger. <laughs> Some people like to then eyeball down the bed and make sure it's not sticking out. Um, I don't find that quite as accurate for what I do. So I'm going to back it off until it is not touching. I'm not getting any shaving on either side of the blade. And so I'll run it down this side of the blade and then I'll run it down this side of the blade to make sure I'm not getting anything on one side or the other. Then I'm going to move the adjuster knob and just a little bit and see. No shaving, a little bit more. No shaving. I'm getting a little bit of a shaving. Now, now that I have it on there, I'm actually getting a shaving. Let's find out how far I am from one side to the other. Now, what I generally do is I will feel it. And I can feel I'm fairly heavy here and nothing is sticking out on this side. So if I were to slide it with the board on this side of the iron, I'll get a fairly thick shaving there. And on this side of the iron, I get no shaving at all. And so what that means is I have to move the lever towards the heavy side. And I'll move it over just a little bit. And I check it with my finger. Not quite enough. If you check it with your finger, um, over time you get to actually get fairly accurate with feeling it. And you can dial it in. And very little movements will make a big difference down by the iron. So let's give that a try. So let's try it on this side. Fairly light. And a hair heavier. Let's just try that. Pretty good. Pretty good. So there, I have the iron about the same from one side to the other. And now I want to adjust the cut. And for most people, that is a very light and thin cut. Um, this is enough so that you can actually read things through it. For a smoothing plane, um, this is you know somewhat light, but uh, somewhat heavy as well. I mean, you can still see through it to what's underneath, um, but we want to make it even a little bit lighter than that. So in order to move the blade back out a little bit, we actually need to advance this forward, and I'm going to advance it forward until the blade is no longer sticking out, which should be right around there. So I'm not getting anything out. And now I'm going to pull the blade back just a little bit and see if I get anything. And so now I'm literally going to be moving it like a sixteenth of a turn until I start getting something. I felt the wisp. There we go, getting some wisp. And so now I'm just getting this dust. I'm, I'm just sl sort of scratching the surface. I'm not really even doing anything. I'm going to give it a sixteenth of an inch more, or a sixteenth of a turn. And there, now I'm getting these shavings that float. <sighs> Let's see how close we can get this. And so you're getting these wispy things like that. If I move it just a hair more, I 
Let's see if I can even pull one of these out. These are thin enough that they basically disappear when you put them over something that's printed on. So that's basically what, one of the things you can do with a Bailey pattern plane. And you can have this go from, you know, an eighth of an inch thick shaving to, let's see, these are some of the thicker ones that it was just doing, uh, 0 0.05, 0 0.004, so four thousandths of an inch, all the way down to this, which is, let's see, according to my, it's 0 0.000 half. Uh, so half a thousandth thick shaving. Yeah. That's a nice little uh, fun thing to have. So once the patent ran out on the Bailey pattern plane, um, pretty much everyone started making one. And so I have, you know, Miller Falls and Record and uh, uh, Craftsman and, well, Stanley made some of Craftsman's planes, but pretty much everyone started making a, their own Bailey pattern plane. And they l all look basically identical. I mean, here is a Stanley and this one is a Miller Falls. In all respects, they are identical and a lot of the items can be switched from one to the other that is just a uh, a really useful plane it does have its drawbacks some of the things with a wooden plane is you tend to get a little bit better burnished surface and uh, you can also get a, a transition plane which has all of the, sta the same settings and changes that you can get on a Bailey pattern plane but with a wooden sole and uh, transitions are a lot of fun and you do often see small uh, smoothers or uh, number five um, jack planes and it's a all around uh, good pattern plane. I hope you like this little introduction to the Bailey pattern uh, plane. Uh, it is one that I really enjoy and uh, it's just a really good plane that does most things you want them to do. Yes, there, there are many things that are nice about a wooden plane um, and there are a lot of great things about a transition plane and uh, some of the other uh, types out there, I mean, there are, there are more types of planes than uh, you can shake a stick at. But this one's probably the most common for a reason. It is a good, durable system that pretty much anyone can quickly pick up and learn how to use, how to adjust it, and how to take it to what they want. That's about it for this week. Um, I hope you like this. Please let me know in the comments below um, what items would you like to hear more about on this. Uh, is there something that I missed that I should have said? Please let me know. I'd love to hear about that. If you like the video, please hit like and think about subscribing. Also, check out one of my other videos. You might find a video there you like. And until next time, have a wonderful day.